let's talk about common table expressions. The idea is actually pretty straightforward, but students often ask me when and why they should use them. In this video, I'll first do a quick review of CT basics. Next, I'll compare them with subqueries and then also temp tables. And then I'll touch on recursive CTEs. And finally, I'll wrap it up with some practical tips. We're gonna be working with the menu items table. So let's take a look at what's inside. You can see here that there are a bunch of items on the menu, the category of the item and the price of the item. So we're gonna start with this question, how many categories have a maximum price below $15? And to answer this, we need to take a two-step approach. So the first thing we need to do is figure out the max price for each category. And to do that, I am going to look at each category and then the max price for that category. I'm gonna save that as max price. This is from my menu items table and I'm going to group by category. Okay, so if I run that, then you can see for each category, this is the maximum price of an item within that category. Now I wanna know how many max prices are less than $15. So what I'm gonna do is take this here and copy it down here. And I am going to put parentheses around this and then save this as MP. So what's happening here is I'm running this code right here. It's giving me this as an output and then I'm saving this output table as MP so that I can reference it later on. So from here, I want to know how many of these max prices here are less than $15. So I'm gonna do select all from here and then where max price is less than 15. And if I run that, I can see that these two categories have a max price of under 15. And I want to know how many, so I'm gonna do a count here as well. Now this here is a situation of a subquery. This section here is my subquery because it's the select statement within this greater select statement here. Now I'm gonna rewrite this subquery as a CTE. And the way that I can do that is by copying what's in parentheses here, pasting it down here. And now instead of doing as MP, what I'm gonna do is with MP as. And if I do that, then this section here is called my CTE. So if I just run this one more time, you can see what's happening. This here is my output. Up here in the subquery section, we called it MP and it was a subquery. And now down here in my CTE section, we're also calling it MP, but now this whole section is called a CTE. And we know that because it has this with keyword that signifies that this is a CTE. And now we can reference MP just like any other table. So I'm gonna do select all from MP where max price is less than 15. And if I run that, you get these two categories here. And I'm just gonna do a count. And you can see that the answer is two. So my original question was how many categories have that max price below $15? And we were able to figure that out using both a subquery and a CTE. And both of these code blocks will give us the exact same result, only in one situation, this query is within our code. And then in the other situation with the CTE, this code is above the rest of our code. And it has this with keyword here. So at this point, you may be wondering when you should use a subquery versus a CTE. Let's start with subqueries. If you're using older software, then CTEs may not be available to you. I'm currently using MySQL and it was only introduced in MySQL in 2018. Subqueries are great for simple situations of queries within queries. If you're using subqueries and your code runs and it makes sense to you, then you're good to go. Now let's talk about CTEs. They have the cleaner look with all the CTEs at the top of your code. So what I typically do is I start with subqueries since they require slightly less typing, and then I rewrite my subqueries as CTEs when I'm cleaning out my code. They can also handle more complex situations, such as multiple CTEs or multiple references. So let's walk through some examples of this. First, let's go through an example with multiple references. So I'm gonna copy this code right here. And if you remember from before, what it does is it gives us this value of two. So first it shows us for each category, the max price in that category. And then we want to find situations where that max price was less than 15 and count up all those situations. So in this case, we've only referenced MP one time, but let's say we wanted to reference MP another time. So let's say that instead of looking at situations where the max price is less than 15, we wanna look at situations where the max price is less than the average of all these values. So then what I can do here is introduce another query. So I'm gonna say select average of max price from MP. And what this is gonna give me here is the average max price value 
from this output here. And remember, this output here is called MP. And if I run this, you can see that again, I get this output of two. Now you may not have noticed, but in this case down here, we've referenced MP or this table two times, once here and then once here as well. And that's something you can only do with CTEs, not subqueries. If we were using subqueries right now, then this entire query here would have to replace this MP value. And then this entire query here would also replace this MP value here. But in this case, we have much cleaner code because we listed it as a CTE up front at the top, and then we just referenced it twice down here. So this was an example of referencing one CTE multiple times within your query down here. Now let's also go through an example of multiple tables. So what I'm gonna do is copy my code up here. And what this is gonna give me here, let me just run it one more time so you can see, is this output. And let's say that we didn't wanna just look at this output here, but another output as well. So what I'm gonna do now is just check on our menu items again. Select all from menu items. And if I run that, you can see here are all our menu items. And let's say I only want to look at the ones that have chicken in them. So I'm gonna say, select all from menu items where item name like chicken. And if I run that, then you can see that all these menu items have chicken in them. Now let's say I wanted to use this output. I wanna know the max price of the categories of all items with chicken in them. So what I can do is save this as another CTE. So to do that, I'm going to wrap this with parentheses. And then I have my with keyword up here. And right now I have MP as this. Now I'm gonna add a comment here. And instead of MP, I'm going to call this CI for chicken items. And I'm gonna save that as this right here. So now I have two CTEs. I have with MP as this and CI is gonna be this output here with chicken in them. And with those two CTEs, I can now write my select statement. So I'm gonna select everything from the second table. So these were all the chicken items. And then I'm gonna join that with my original table. Those were the max prices on the items.category equal the max prices.category. And if I run that, then you can see now I have all those chicken items and it's now joined with that other table, MP, that had all the max prices for that category. And again, what's notable here is that I was able to list all my CTEs up front, multiple CTEs, and then reference them down here just using CI and MP. And I only used with once, and then I did MP as this comma, CI as this. And then I can go down here and write my select statement. Now again, the reason I'm showing you this is because this is where CTEs are more powerful than subqueries. If I were just using subqueries, then where I have CI right here, I would have to replace with this entire query. And then where I have MP here, I would replace with this entire query and the code would start looking pretty messy. But instead, I can reorganize it to put everything up top. And so my code looks a lot cleaner. Another question I often get is what about temp tables? How does that compare with CTEs and when should I use them? Okay, so let's start with CTEs. If you've used CTEs to clean up your subqueries and you're happy with your results, then you're good to go. However, if you find yourself using the same CTEs again and again, especially if your data set is large and your queries are taking a really long time to run, then consider creating a temp table. That output is stored and you can reference it multiple times without re-executing the code again and again. Now, one downside here is that you need the correct permissions to do this. And if you're an analyst at a large company, you may not have them. So in that case, you can just use CTEs or you can work with your data engineering team to perhaps store the results of your CTEs in something called a view for then you to query. Now, finally, I wanna cover recursive CTEs. For this, we're going to be looking at the stock prices table. So if you take a look here, you'll see that there are four dates along with the corresponding stock prices and there are two dates that are missing, the second and the fifth. So what we're gonna do is use a recursive CTE to fill in those values. So here I've pasted an example of a recursive CTE. You can tell it's a CTE because it has this with keyword. And in addition, we have this recursive keyword here. And at a high level, what's happening is if you look over here, we're starting with the 6-1 date. I'm just gonna run this code right here. This 6-1 date just shows up down here. This part is called my anchor section. And then from there, I'm doing a union all. So unions, what they do is it stacks outputs. So in this case, if I have this 6-1, one, 
it's going to add a value here and then below it one at a time. And now what I'm adding is this section here. And this is called the recursive section. This is something that's gonna happen again and again. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my date, which is this right here, and I'm adding one day to that. So that will give me six two, and then that's going to add on down here. And then I'm gonna keep doing that until I get to six six, so all the way down here. So now if I run this right here, you can see that I get six one all the way to six six, all done using this recursive CTE. Now from here, we don't just want the dates, we also wanna see those stock prices again. So instead of just looking at my dates, I am going to do a left join on my original stock prices data. And then that's gonna be on d.dt equals s.date. So I'm just gonna do d.date and s.price. So now we have all the dates along with the prices. And let's say that you didn't wanna see these null values here. You wanted to replace them with some other values. This part is gonna get a little fancy, but stick with me. I can do a coalesce and that will replace the null values with some value. So I'm gonna do a coalesce on the price column and let's say I wanna replace it with 600. If I run that, those values are 600, but let's say I don't wanna replace it with 600. I want to replace it with the previous value, so this 668. So what I can do here is use a window function. And if you wanna better understand window functions, you can check out my window function video but what I'm gonna do is a lag price over. And now if I run this, then you can see this lag has returned the previous price. And now here, I'm just gonna remove this second column here. And if I run this code, you can see that I now have all the dates and then there are no null values here because I've replaced it with the previous row. And I was able to do that using a recursive CTE. Now this is a very specific use case, Recursive CTEs are useful in many situations where you need to do something again and again, and you need to write a query that references itself. Now let's recap everything that we've talked about. If you're writing simple queries within queries, or you're using older software, then you should go with subqueries. If your code is starting to have too many subqueries and you need to clean it up, then you should go with CTEs. CTEs are great for more complex queries with multiple CTEs or multiple references to the same CTE. Now, if you want to store the results of your CTE because you're referencing it again and again, and you have the permissions to do so, then you can create a temp table. Personally, the majority of the time, I'm using CTEs. And finally, I showed you an example of a recursive CTE. They're not used often day to day as an analyst, but they're really powerful in specific situations, like for generating a series of dates or when working with data that's in a hierarchical structure. And that's your quick introduction to common table expressions. If you'd like to learn more, check out our award-winning self-paced courses and guided projects for analysts and data scientists at Maven Analytics. Thanks for watching and as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. I'll see you in the next one.